I'm Al Martins, uh, happy to be here today. Thank you all for, for joining this uh, CAMCO webinar. Really happy that uh, you're able to schedule a little bit of time. It's not gonna be a really long webinar, but I think it'll be very fruitful in what you're gonna be getting. Uh, the webinar is being recorded. So after the presentation, if you've missed anything, then certainly you can reach out to CAMCO and uh, they will get it to you. So you can review it with other teammates that may have missed it. There's also a promotion, um, certainly for those of you who love what you're going to see, uh, that you uh, are able to get, and that is a free year of maintenance with the Tool Manager IQ software. So I wanted to get those things uh, out of the way. Brandon will actually be driving the presentation. We just have a couple of slides here just to give you an idea of what the meat and potatoes is all about. So you users of, of Gibbscam recognize that you've got your tools, you've got your processes, you've got everything you need, but you don't have the ability really to share tool information and access more tool data than what you have inside of the Gibbs tool library. So organizing the tools is what this is all about and sharing the tools with everyone in the office, being able to seamlessly do that. And the nice thing is how great it is integrated now and in future versions, even more integration is coming your way. So yeah, stay tuned to the, uh, the next slide, which really just talks about questions. You can ask questions anytime. Uh, so when you think of them, although you can't uh, orally dictate them, you can certainly type them in the questions area and we will get to them uh, after the presentation. Just, I don't want you to lose the, the train of thought. Sometimes you have a question right when we're doing something. So don't feel shy about typing them in right away. So we're gonna switch over and Brandon and I are gonna kind of tag team this uh, presentation. Um, Tool Manager IQ is, uh, is a product that I think you'll find very interesting. The interface brings you right into Gibbs and um, Brandon is gonna go ahead. When you install the plugin, it creates an icon for you right, right on the top um, toolbar. And yeah, once you press it, obviously it'll start up. You have one database. <clears throat> when you get the software, you actually have a, a plug-in version, which you see here running inside the software. And you'll also end up with a standalone version, which you can uh, run on another computer, typically at a tool crib. It might be somebody in administration, whatever it might be, but it'll have its own um, similar interface. So it's nothing shocking. Your information is the same but you may want to put information in in Gibbs specifically about what you're interested in in running the program, but the guys on the tool crib may be interested in the location of the tool, uh, barcodes of the, the tool, that kind of thing, who the supplier was, all of that information that might be interesting to them and not so interesting to you. But at the same time, they're shared in the database, so as you're populating the information and someone else is populating the information, you're harvesting all this, this good detail. So I uh, just wanted to keep that in mind. All right, so Brandon's got it up here. Brandon, I'll let you drive a little bit and uh, really speak about whether you're a, a single man shop or you're a multi-seat organization, why this is an advantage to you. Uh, and really, as soon as you'll see this, the ability to have your tools on the side and bring them into our system uh, so you can organize them. I, I think you'll you'll see that to be very useful. Uh, Brandon, I'll let you drive a little. Thanks, Al. Appreciate that, and I agree with all that. Um, you know, one man shop. It's really for organization, right? You can see that you can save your tools, your holders, your fixtures, different related information. And I see a lot of guys out there that every time they need a tool, they may be hunting down an old program that they remember using that tool in, or maybe they're making it from scratch every time. So, you know, there's, there's many things that people do that could be sped up quite a bit, especially by the integrated version here. Now, with the standalone, like you said, pretty much everything is the exact same. 
except for the ability to import and export directly. So that's really going to speed things up because you already have the information in Dipscan. So all you need to do is just boot up Tool Manager IQ with the integrated command icon, like you said. It's all fully customizable, movable, uh, all the good stuff like any regular one. And you're going to get this interface, which is usually just a couple clicks to where you need to go or less. So if I'm coming in and I'm looking for tools or holders or fixtures, I'm just going into these sections and these subsections and instantly getting a list of the current, um, you know, either entire database or there are different ways to uh, group things and I'll show you all that. But the, the quick, the quick part of it is just being able to send it to and from Tool Manager IQ. So I'm going to show you that right now. And again, you can add these by, by hand, but why would you? Uh, instead, you can either use you know, independent tools and independent holders, or you can do an assembly uh, of both. So I'm going to show you those here. And it always comes down to really just selecting it in Gibbs and pressing import from Gibbs scan. You know, whether, whatever section you're in, that's going to start importing everything. All of the information that Gibbscam has on its side will be pre-populated. So you're not having to enter any of that. And you can just go through this dialog and there are a couple of extra things on top of the Gibbscam stuff uh, that you may or may not want to take advantage of. So I'm going to put this tool in independently of a holder click here. And maybe it's a standard tool I already have, you know, always in my library. I'm going to put it in my own group here. So obviously you can group things, let's say by job, by machine, by tool type. So it's all up to you what you call these groups. So just another layer of um, speed when you're looking to find things. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, here, Brandon, I might just chime in and, and uh, let the audience know. Think of it, if, if any of you use iTunes, think of these really as playlists. Because these, these tools, they get stored in once, but you can use each of these tools in different playlists based on, as Brandon said, maybe different uh, machine types or different tool types. So if you're using this 80 degree diamond on as a, a fixed tool on a, on a Nakamura, Morisica, whatever your machine happens to be, um, you can now have it in that playlist, but you can also hold it in the primary playlist, but it'll always exist in your entire library. Exactly. You, you'll see it if you turn the grouping off, you'll see your whole list of tools, but absolutely 100% going to make it easier to find those tools the next time. And I'll show you some filtering as well. There's different levels of, of um, ways that you can make it easier to find your tools. So I'll do this uh, for the first one here. I'll put these in a job one group and we'll Say that's good. Um, everything else is in here, you know, some details, a name that you can give it. You can add your own notes. You can change the picture if you'd like to something that uh, maybe, you know, uh, is a little bit easier to see and just kind of spark yourself to say, oh, that's that tool. Um, there's the barcode that I was showing earlier. And there's supplier info as well. So that's something that maybe the uh, standalone version is used to add. Um, and then the purchaser always knows where to get that tool. Um, so I'm going to press OK here. It'll import. I can always go in there and, and change it after. Um, but on that note, just to show you the suppliers, you know, it's just going to keep track of the supplier and all their contact details. So you would be able to come in here at any time and add those in here. And then you could apply that to the tool as well. But just making things easier when you get to ordering that tool again you know exactly which one you got to get so that insert is in the uh, list now huge plus there brandon being able to uh know where you got that tool last time sometimes you have a you know a holder from one company and an insert from another company and you want to be able to make sure you're using the right insert for this particular job that you have it saved under. So if it's in that playlist for, you know, flap track number 47, um, you'll remember that that 
insert was the one you used last time. Absolutely. It may be a specific grade, a specific uh, geometry that you're using. So 100%, it's all about finding that tool quick and getting the proper tool in there and no mistakes ordering the wrong ones. Um, and then that leads to downtime, that leads to wasted money. So 100% yep. agree. And I'm going to do a similar thing here with the holders because you can add holders in here as well. I'm doing them independently right now, but if they stay together, you know, as an assembly, then that's fine too. Um, but I'm just going to select the tool once again, like before, that has a holder. I'm going to import from Gibbscam, and that's going to create my model for me. I'm going to save that model. And again, I have a picture I could change. I have a name. I have notes. So any extra information you want to put in there um, is just fine. And then there's similarly to the supplier, a holder class. So I can add holder classes and uh, go in here and choose from those and press OK. And now that is also added into my, my uh, list here. And you can see the holder classes here. Again, just saying new, adding them in there, and then you can be applied to those holders. And those notes are handy, especially for guys who have multi-axis turning centers um, in being able to define what tools belong where and what turrets. Uh, same thing with screw machines and other things where you can add notes that you don't typically have locations for uh, anywhere else. Yes, and you can see an example of those in our, our default database too. We provide this sample database that's totally optional to install, but they're all there um, in a backup file. You can always add those in, you know, so you have somewhere to start from and then add to that library or start from scratch. But absolutely, the notes are, are crucial. I'm going to add uh, one more thing. I'm going to add this insert, which already has a holder. So that would be the third way that you can add things, or maybe technically the second. But all the same, you know, it knows it has a holder or not. And I'm just clicking it in Gibbs, import from Gibbs Cam. It can't be much quicker, really. And it takes a, 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 a picture again, has the holder this time. You can change it. All the same thing applies here. I'm just going to throw this one in that group as well to, to be tracking. I'm going to press OK. And so as you're adding to the list, you know, the, the, the tools that you can add are basically all supported at this point. So you can see I have a Prime A insert here. So the Prime turning has been added. A couple of mill tools that uh, weren't supported before have now been added. So all of the milling tools are supported, broaching, probing. So, you know, and any new tools that come out, of course, we'd be uh, adding those as well. And if you're looking to add them all at once, you can do that too. If I just select multiple tools, go back to my import from Gibbscan button, and now it'll come up with a dialog of each one. Or I can come in and I can say, add all. You know, if I don't want to add all the extra information right now, or I have no use for it, and I can just add them all at once by pressing OK there. And those are now added to the list as well. So the, you know, the adding portion obviously is extremely quick. Um, I will send them back to Gibbscam, but I just wanted to talk about the, uh, the list that you see here for a second because that list is totally customizable. Well, that, what's nice about that too is you may have processes and you may have a lot of processes in your um, library, but oftentimes it's, after you start to get a few hundred in there, depending on who names them and how they're categorized, it gets a little bit lost. So you may be looking for a process for a few specific tools. And now, you know, you don't know how to hunt it down. But with Tool Manager IQ, you can go back to every process, bring it in, and bring all those tools into Tool Manager IQ. And now you can hunt them down any way you want. So as Brandon was saying, if I wanted to filter and just say, I want to see whatever, all the um, quarter inch drills, or I want a half inch end mill, or whatever tool I'm looking for, carbide uh, drills, uh, spade drills, I can go ahead and filter and now just hunt those down and find what I'm looking for, even if I don't remember exactly what the name was. 
Um, whereas you can't do that with a process. Uh, you've got to count on whoever saved it last and make sure that they saved it in the same directories for you to be able to access them. So this takes that pain away and allows you to find the, the tools you're looking for. It really does. And you might have seen what I was doing there just as you were talking right about it. And you would be able to customize what columns are shown. So whatever ones you want to see, you just turn the check mark on in there. Now they can be sorted, descending, descending, reordered. But I added multiple filters. So yeah, if you searching one column isn't enough, then you can add multiples. And just like I said, just typing it in and it's gonna only show tools with that information. And exactly. that does work. And bring, to bring in your own custom image. So you may have a a grooving tool that you use all the time that is specially ground to be able to uh, for a relief for a specific um, feature on a part you know take a picture of it and bring it in and that image will now exist specifically for that tool so you don't have to run out to the shop to go look for it you can see the image here and uh, know that's the one you need for the job that's it and that information can be printed and exported too if you want to Print it, it'll print as is, however you customize it. And if you want to export it, it'll do a CSV file, it'll do an XML file. You can import that into another software and um, that could contain, you know, that barcode you saw on the other the other screen there. Some people actually scan those in and they'll print in, they'll just show only the barcode column or maybe the tool uh, name as well and print that out and use that. All right, and of course, everything that we import in can be exported out so if you've created one tool or you create six tools you can um, just select them in into a manager iq and export them back into gibbs and you've got the tools you need that's it i could find them like this i could switch to my job and find them and yeah if there's already a, a tool that exists that's the same it'll even prompt you and whether you want to replace it or if you want to add it at the end or insert it in the first available spot or whatever it is it all comes down to exactly that hour where you're just using the export to give scan button instead selecting it into a manager iq quickly finding it you know after quickly finding it with the filtering the grouping and export and those tools are back in the new program now that's a, that's a huge benefit, guys. I, I don't have to tell you how powerful that is. And there is uh, nothing in the tool data management world that is comparable to this. So it really is a powerful tool for you to um, take advantage of um, at, at every level. So it allows you to take everything you've got today, bring it into the database and share it with everybody in your organization and then allows you to mix and match the tools necessary, create playlists for all of those tools, and then bring them into uh, a new job, knowing that you've selected the right tool for, for that specific application. Um, yeah, so that's true for the tools, and Brandon, you touched on the holders a little bit. Um, yeah. Did you wanna uh, touch on, uh, jump onto fixtures or, or holder classes? Absolutely, yeah, fixture is the next one. I just thought I'd show, you know, if you haven't added the item to a group already, you can always do that anytime, add new groups and, and add the tools. Like you said, the tools can be part of as many groups as you want. So just wanted to show that that was uh, available. But yeah, I mean, again, tools, it is what it is. Um, you can also update. So if you change something, you can update in the library, the holders, I spoke about, that, about those and hold the classes. And then you do have your fixtures as well. Um, so I have a chuck here. And if I wanted to add that in, again, I'm just going to highlight it over in Gibbs here. And I'm going to import from Gibbs scan. And keep in mind, all of these could be added by hand. But why do that when you have it right here? And it's going to generate that image. It's going to have the model again, the name, notes. And there's also an offset that you can use. Uh, which is a, a really nice function where anytime you export this back into Gibbscam, it's going to come in exactly where it was. So if you want some kind of a to, to set it at a standard, maybe the zero is always a certain place, then you can apply an offset before you export it to save yourself a translate. Or 
you can just wait until it's in Gibbs and do it that way. And so I'll show you what I mean here. I have a zero, zero, zero. Let's say I put in a negative seven here and I'm going to send that back to Gibbs. So if I'm on a new program, I find my eight-inch chuck, all the same filtering, all the same thing going on in the list here. I export the Gibbs cam, and that's going to send it to Gibbs cam with the offset. So it's not a must, but a, a handy thing to kind of keep everything inside of Tool Manager IQ. And you could even add, you know, multiple items of the same uh, type as well, and it'll come in with that offset. So I said minus seven inches, just kind of a number I pulled out of my my head, but you can see that it's there. And if you have a known starting position, it makes it really easy to just change it on the fly uh, for different parts, different part lengths. And especially on a laid side where you know that zero is uh, usually on the face. Well, it allows you also to put notes if these were uh, specific fixtures that you're using for different jobs, uh, you know, notes about when they were last calibrated, who put them in the, in the crib or where they are in um within your 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 shop because a lot of times you have hundreds of fixtures sitting on shelves and it may be a bit of a challenge to find out where they are so knowing where they are putting the notes there understanding and the other thing is you know you may have one user who is real good at uh, downloading the fixtures whether they're chick vices or, or kurt or whatever the mighty bites and uh, he's got uh, in his workstation all of the the fixtures well now you can put them in inside a tool manager iq and everybody is going to have access to them and be able to use them um, on on the jobs that they're working on so that you'll have a seamless look and feel to the uh to the shop so it doesn't matter what programmer was working on them um, everybody's going to have that same same tool information same fixture information holder information that uh that you've been used to. That's it, and you can see I just opened the standalone version. I did a little refresh, not even usually needed, you know, if you wait the, the required time for it to auto refresh. Now I have that chuck in there. I can change things about it. I can do whatever from another integrated or standalone version. Absolutely. And this can live on a network as well. It can live on a separate server computer. So in this, the settings here, you're just hooking up to an SQL database. So if you already have an existing one, then you can use that. The installer does come with SQL, so it will uh, install SQL um, Express and also has a little wizard to, to create your uh, database. Um, so all of that is uh, doable, whether you're just downloading it uh, and no SQL experience or you have everything set up on a server already, and directories for all the files. So it really is a true sharing between everyone keeping everyone on the same page. Well, that's great, Brandon. So we're coming up to the 23-minute uh, mark, and I know we wanted to keep this uh, short. And I, Brandon, I, I know you're showing different languages here. So if uh, some of you prefer one of the eight other languages that <laughs> beyond English, um, <laughs> I think we have it in Texan, don't we? Uh, just kidding. Um, but yeah, the Southern drawl, maybe. Um, you can select. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we're going to open this up to some questions and answers. I haven't seen um, anybody type anything in just yet, but ultimately uh, those are the highlights. I mean, there's a lot more that we can discuss, but basically those are the highlights of what we believe Tool Manager IQ will do for you uh, instantly. Um, yeah. So let me uh, let me open it up to the uh, to the audience. Um, let's have a look here. Um, are there any plans or upgrades in the works? Uh, well, yes, and yes, you're getting your first year of maintenance uh, for free. Uh, but we do already have um, Gibbs Cam 2024 is being released in October, I believe. 
Um, we also plan to release version 3.0 of Tool Manager IQ at that time. So that integration will change up the licensing, so it doesn't really affect you too much, but it'll make licensing a little easier. But the, the big announcement is uh, Fritz, and I don't want to spoil it, but it's a digital assistant that will come along with our Tool Manager IQ. Those things are going to be uh, introduced in uh, October. Let's see here. Along with a new interface, I believe, too, that kind of matches a bit. This Gibbs? That new Gibbs interface, that'll be in 2025. Very nice. Yeah. Look forward to it. So it just gives you a, a, an idea that we already have planned out several years of iterations of Tool Manager IQ. The interesting thing about that, you know, that you mentioned that, Brandon, is tool management systems have been very popular in Europe for many years. But the reality is in, in North America, um, US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, for some reason, uh, tool data management systems have not really been recognized. And I think the, the reason for that is the biggest tool management companies are German. Um, and obviously they're focused in their markets. So ours is focused, uh, you know, for the American market and it's focused in Imperial. Uh, of course you can do metric as well, but um, now that we're, we're pushing the flag here, I think a lot of people are starting to get interested in it. Anyway, that's a side point. Um, there's a question here. Uh, is there the ability to store feeds and speeds assigned to the tool? Are you able to store complete tool builds, holders, and combined? Did you want to touch on that, Brenda? Yeah, we do have plans to support the intermediate tooling if it's going that far. Um, the holders will support anything that's added as a custom holder. So I have seen people use, you know, things that could be intermediate tooling, but just as a tool holder, that, that would work no problem. Uh, the feeds and speeds, you could put it in as a note. I know that's been talked about too, to have that carried around with the tool. Um, I believe even it's cam, um, yeah, if uh, that gets implemented, then we will implement it here and hopefully, uh, yeah, be able to exactly. pass that information back and forth. On the feeds and speeds, that's gonna be in 2020, we're, we're gonna call it version four. It'll be uh, spring or summer of, uh, of next year. The, as far as the tool insert, the tool holder, um, all of that can be um, as a uh, stored in the tools. So Brandon, you, you'd jump up to the tools, you have an assembly, right? You can grab a tool, you can grab a holder, and you can join the two together. That's right. And anything that's Adam added as a custom tool holder, you know, the standard database, they all get saved in there. Um, some of them will save in the tool itself, and then you might have seen the uh, model be created for, for that one as well. So, yeah, if it's a custom tool, it just goes in the holder section, and all of that would be supported. And then again, intermediate tooling, if uh, that was part of that question at all, that will be in the game plan as well. Intermediate tool will come uh, probably October of next year. So intermediate tooling is a whole other class of, of uh, segments, but uh, assemblies as far as tool holders and inserts, uh, that's supported today. Yes. Okay, is there a save as function to use a tool as a starting template for a new tool? Uh, there is a... Uh duplicate option which uh, i believe would, would work the way you're saying yes so you can pick a tool you can duplicate it and then you could change it from there if you'd like i think um, that's what uh what tom is saying I, I think that would probably work if it isn't tom let me know but um start with whatever tool duplicate it and then go ahead and uh, change it up yes and just on my mind for some reason that you can back up this database too so if you're dealing with multiples and you want to back one up and load another one that's another option depending on what you're doing um, that would be uh, 
that would be probably overkill to do the whole database again. But I, I think the duplicate will do the will do the trick for sure. I think. Yes, duplicate for that question. I agree. All right. So how how much does it cost? Um, so basically, the plugin with the standalone package is three thousand um, dollars. So that's we believe a very reasonable price to uh, enable um, this kind of productivity. Um, at Camco, of course, we'll give you uh, quotes and the rest of it. Uh, the first year of maintenance is free. Um, you can buy additional modules. So in other words, if you, let's say you start off with the plug-in and the standalone, but you have four seats of Gibbs and you want all the users to have it. So you could buy three more standalone plugins. And now those guys could have use of it and share the same database, but you may only need the one standalone version for um, your tool crib or your administration so basically you can mix and match and the plug-in or the standalone are half the price so 1500 bucks uh, hopefully that that answers uh, that question like you said no uh, no maintenance i believe for a year yep no maintenance for a year uh for camco customers and somebody says can i try before i buy uh yes you can go to the toolmanageriq.com website and you can download a version there and we'll license it for 14 days and you can yeah give it a shot certainly we will support you you just call the camco uh, tech support line and uh someone on the team will walk you through it uh, maybe spend uh, half an hour an hour with you to get it set up and make sure you're up and running so we're very focused on making sure you're happy with it we think it's a uh, a great tool and we want you to feel the same all right everyone thank you for joining us we look forward to working with you uh down the road and reach out to uh to the team at uh, sales team over at uh, camco for for quotes and anything else and we thank you all and uh, appreciate so much your time